Now, based on this concept, by the moment we train it, na, we have back propagation through time. It RNNs will have this concept. So, training an RNN is very, uh, very much similar to training a traditional neural networks. Right? We use here back propagation algorithm, but there's a little of twist here to to have the difference between RNN and BPTT that is back propagation through time, because the parameters here shared are by all time steps in the network, right? The gradient, the uh, vanishing and the growing gradient at each input uh, depends only on the calculations of the current step, not on the previous step, right? For example, if I want to calculate the gradient at the time or uh, the time step as t equal to four, I need to back propagate three steps and sum up all those gradients and then calculate it for the current state. Now, the moment I am at t equal to four, I'm having t minus three steps, that is three steps backward. That process of going backward is called as BPTP, back propagation through time. Now this, the more number of back propagation instances you have, the computation power will be reduced and your processing time will be increased. But if you, are uh, more prominent to have an accurate model, accurate answer, that number of computation process time will be required, right? So, for example, in very short, I'm telling you, if I want to calculate at an instance of t equal to four, and I want to propagate the last three memory cells, that is, I will be going three steps back. I will sum up all those nine steps, and it will, Call it as gradient. This summing up of all these back three steps is called as back propagation through time. Right? This this has the learning ability of long term dependencies. Right? More than four you can go. Due to this, what is called as the vanishing or exploding gradient problem. Now there exists some kind of uh, mechanisms where we can deal with these problems depending on the certain type of applications what we are going to use. The most uh, prominent uh, algorithm is the LSTMs where it is being used specifically designed to overcome these two type of gradients that is vanishing and exploding gradient. In back propagation, we have a single input which is being sent to the network at a single time for a normal recurrent network. Wherein a only single output is obtained, but back propagation uses both the current prior inputs as an input. Now, as I said, t equal to four, that means there will be three more states, previous states recorded, right? So this concept is referred as time step. T minus three, t minus two, t minus one will be nothing but the time step. And one time step will consist of multiple time series data, u, v, and w parameters. Those are nothing but our data points entering at the same time at each iteration at each time step. Now this is the actual diagram how it is looked. As I said, these are the inputs, these are the outputs and this is the feed forward propagation. Now you can see the uh, black ones, the black arrows which are moving in forward is nothing but your, your normal RNN. But the derivative, the past information what we take from the current state, if I'm in S0, all my values will be reset to zero. Remember that pseudo code wherein the first initial stage must be always state, uh, state to zero. The moment I start my iterations, there will be buffers, RNN cells created and the data will be stored somewhere here as X zero and Y zero. This will be provided to the next layer, to the next layer and so on, right? Now at a particular layer, I can see that data is being back propagated some, somewhere through these stages, right? For example, if I'm having a very long sequence, uh, you will be having a hard time to carry that information from a very earlier time, calculating all those steps carrying at the, at each and every step. So what we are doing here is we're trying to process an entire paragraph or a text to predict where RNNs may leave out the important information from the very beginning stage. If my, <coughs> if my memory holds only 10 steps, and I want to calculate an entire <coughs> an entire paragraph. The moment I'm 
<clears throat> moving to 11th iteration my first iteration will be left out now this will affect my current going on iteration right so rnns are very fine when they are dealing with short term dependencies for long term dependencies rnns are not recommended right so for example if i am having a sentence as the longest river on earth is right now this sequence has nothing to do with the context of my statement what rns need to do here is remember what was said before or this what is the meaning of it all they need to know the rns need to know about is that amongst all rivers which is the longest river right so the longest river on earth is nile and the probable answer for this will be in a univariate analysis that we know that the longest river on earth is nile amongst the entire data set my entire previous memory i'm having only one single answer now as the sentence is goes on increasing for longest river on earth it will give you a perfect answer but what if the sentences are much more longer as in i want to see that in my in this uh, as in particular sentence the man who ate my pizza has purple hair now see there are multiple nouns here right ate is the pizza he had purple hair now this is kind of context where i have a man a pizza and a purple hair right so in this case the description of purple hair is for the man not for the pizza right so this is a long dependency this is just a small example i'm just creating two dependencies the man who ate pizza had purple hair now how do i find out the contextual grammar the dependencies between man pizza and purple hair right so this must be done by the rnns with the perfect recurrent neural networks right so in this case for long sentences the way i go on increasing the sentences into paragraphs into articles the data will be much more complex so if we back propagate the errors in this case would need to apply in a chain rule right so to calculate the error after the third time step concerning with the first one right there will be multiple chain steps iteration and there will be a long dependency right so what we do here is we apply a chain rule if any one of the gradients approached to zero all the gradients would rush to zero exponentially right and due to this fast multiplication they would shrink exponentially and ultimately they would vanish right so this makes it possible for the model to learn at such states would no longer help the network to learn anything that's why this kind of state is called as vanishing gradient problem right the moment your dependencies sum up and move to zero that is called as vanishing gradient problem and the moment it goes on increasing it is called as growing now this is a small example where we are using a loss function loss function will be as stated here in ln we are using here cross entropy loss paired with softmax function right we have seen those three different functions here now for example this is the formula stated to train an rnn we need a loss function among those three loss functions you can use any of those we are going to use this with softmax now suppose if a positive to to text is predicted to be 95% positive right the prediction is 95% for a positive text by rnn then what is the loss right now this is the formula how it is given you may perform this on your calculator uh, this is an opposite of log ln if so it is 95% will be getting this now what we get here this as pc pc is the rnn's predicted probability for the correct class what correct class we need either it is positive or negative so my correct class is positive so for example if i am having this kind of positive text which is to be predicted as 95% positive then after calculating loss what we get we train the rnn by using gradient descent to minimize the loss right now this loss must go on minimizing so there are few steps how we can implement this so what we need to first do 
compute the cross entropy error first by using the current and the actual output right now after the first step we will be unfolding it right suppose if i want to go for three step there will be three different iterations of unfolding right then for each time step in the network the gradient descent will be calculated with respect to the weight of each parameter now the moment i decide my parameters and fix those parameters that will be treated as weight for the next iteration so once these weights are decided for all time step same we can combine together for all gradients time steps then we update it for the recurrent neurons and then go for the more dense layers each time for each back propagation each step all these steps are being computed right so there are two problems which can be overcome by lstm vanishing gradient problem and exploding gradient problem these are the two points i think uh, this we will be covering in our tomorrow's lecture uh, apart from this uh, let me see your syllabus yeah back propagation uh, tomorrow we are going to see vanishing and exploding gradients lstm which will be uh, the best example to overcome the disadvantages of rnn and vptt and we are going to see the third part that is gated recurrent units and bidirectional lstms and using these i have one uh, sort of python code as an in example which will let you see how loss is being uh, going to zero and your accuracy is being increased okay so i hope uh, so far this we'll be seeing again revising tomorrow the rnn the working principle vpt vanishing gradient i'll be seeing showing you through some examples and the actual main part of overcoming of rnn will be seen tomorrow at 7 o'clock same link will be shared you can use the same link to join again there will be two sessions tomorrow of each of 40 minutes okay okay sir uh yes uh, it's a very good session we will start tomorrow with the same link and with uh, this uh, whatever the remaining content of rna and we will start sharply at 7 pm fine yeah sure.